Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Adelma Shell Star Decompression Timer. Decompression Timer. Um, I think I should call this the Shell Shocked because every time I pick it up, I am um, shocked or surprised by the weight of this watch. It is a heavy watch. It, it's, it's a big watch. It. Um, I didn't realize it was this big when I saw pictures of it, but it's a big watch. We'll get into the the dimensions later, but the MSRP for this watch is one thousand four hundred fifty dollars. Uh, if you're not familiar with the the brand here, uh, as I was not, they were founded in 1924, so almost 100 years ago, and they were rebranded in 1966 following a takeover. Uh, in 1924, this company was founded by two brothers. I believe it was called. A, A, and G, uh, something like that. I'll leave a link in the description to the website for this company here and also uh, for this watch directly. So we have a sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating applied to that crystal. It is a black dial with this orange and yellow decompression timer scale here. I think we're in focus, are we? Okay, there we go. So um, you can see up at the top meters and feet and what that indicates here is the numbers just to the left here are the measurements in meters and then to the right in feet. So the way this watch works, or at least the way I understand it, is you would set the minute hand. So let's unscrew the crown here. You set the minute hand to 12 at the beginning of your dive. Then as you uh, time goes by during your dive as time elapses. Um, you would let's see here. Let's say it's been 20 minutes, and depending upon your depth, if it's 20 meters or 35, um, the the farther down you go, the more time that you need for decompression. And I have not been able to figure out how the scale works. Other than that, it's supposed to tell you on here how much decompression time you need so yeah i'll leave a link to another article i read about this um unfortunately i really couldn't figure out how to use this watch <laughs> it just looks cool as far as i'm concerned but that's how it's supposed to work anyway let's set the handset back to 10 10. so we have the crown screwed out here she let's go through the rest of my notes here so the loom is unknown and does not specify what the loom is on the website for this watch. Screw the crown back in. So you can see it does have these raised indices here, applied indices around the perimeter. And then the cardinal points have different uh, indices. Why am I not focusing? So 12, 3, 6, and 9. You have the double marker there and then for the other indices it's just a single marker and then you can see at the bottom there it says swiss made and then it has these little orange marks around the rehot or the chapter ring so i think it just shows each other minute there uh, one two three four and so on so kind of interesting design Okay, let's zoom back out here. You get a better sense of the size of this watch. I'll put it on wrist here in a moment. So the movement is either an ETA 2824 or a Solita SW200. Um, it doesn't specify which. You can get one or the other one. They're essentially the same movement anyway. The Solita SW200 is, is a clone of the ETA 2824 as the uh, patent expired on that movement. So anyway, um, you can see the case back here is actually a screwed in case back, not a screw down case back, which is very interesting to me. Also, the display case back is very interesting because this watch is rated to 500 meters of water resistance, which this is very impressive. And you have a helium escape valve there as well. But I'm really surprised that it has a display case back and the uh, screwed in case back and still rated to 500 meters of water resistance or 50 atm is indicated here and you can see the watch is swiss made and then stainless steel 
in the Sapphire Crystal. So yes, you can see there it does have a custom rotor with the brand name engraved on there, Dalma. Let's see, what else does it say? Uh, 26 joules Swiss made. So the 26 joules tells me that this is the SW200. The 25 joules, it would be the ETA2824. Okay, so looking at the case, it is mostly brushed. And we do have a polished chamfer here on the edge of the case. The crown guards are unique as well. They're kind of a rounded crown guard. Reminds me of another watch, but I can't place it at the moment. And then you can see the lugs here are straight across. And then a nice big signed screw down crown. Uh, that logo is similar to the, the crown on the Rolex. Also, I think Ford just has a crown as well. There's a couple different brands that have a crown like that. So there we go. Yes, Delma Shell Star Automatic. So overall, I think it's a pretty cool looking watch. So the bracelet, we have solid end links. Solid links. Um, these are held in by split pins, which I thought was a little interesting considering the price point. So yeah, just simple push pins. Each of these links are independent here, so you can see a lot of articulation on these links here. It's a little bit of a gap in between them too, so they move around a bit. Um, but yeah, very comfortable on wrist, and you can see it does have a polished center link and then the brushed, brushed outer links there. I'm sure you've seen a split pin before, but uh, there is a split pin on the watch. So kind of a presidential style bracelet, a nice big bracelet, actually 24 millimeter lug width here, and it tapers down to 22. Uh, stamped clasp, I'm sorry, milled clasp. Actually that portion there is probably stamped, but it's a nice thick piece of metal, dual pushers. Nice and easy to open and close, and uh, plenty secure with those dual pushers there. And you can see the clasp is signed with Delma and that crown logo again. Oh yes, I forgot to mention it does have an aluminum bezel insert, which is unidirectional. And this one is very stiff to turn. It's not going to get turned uh, accidentally. I think we're lined up maybe one more quick oh, yeah there we go nice and lined up looking forward to checking out the loom on this watch so the dimensions we're looking at 58.3 millimeter from the uh, male center link here and lug to lug on the watch case itself 51.1 millimeter diameter is 44 millimeter thickness is 13.8 millimeter and as I mentioned the lug width is 24 millimeter and it does taper down to 22 and the crown is nice and big at 8 millimeter and this watch weighs in at 201 grams it's among the largest and heaviest watches I've had on the channel to date um, the website says that it's 150 grams. There's no way it's a 150 gram watch. You can just tell by picking it up. Um, I think my Submariner is 147 grams. Actually, no, I'll grab that real quick and just show them side by side so you can get a sense of the size of this watch. And actually, I need to grab my SKX too. That's actually in the watch winder that I'm testing out. So I will pause the video in a moment here. Um, so 500 meters water resistance. Let me get this on wrist. And then I'll grab those other two watches because I'll need them for a size comparison and loom comparison. So here we are zoomed back out. Um, I have a six and a half inch wrist with a 52 millimeter wristband. So 
the case almost overhangs my wrist by itself and then those male thunder links do for sure they do curve down uh, pretty quickly so it's not so bad but um, it definitely overhangs my wrist if you haven't subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button i greatly appreciate it and it really helps me out yeah those uh, power stunner links to show a lot of um, dust or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, but uh, there we go. All right, let me grab those other two watches and I'll be right back. All right, so let's check this out. Compared to my SKX, the SKX is a 42 millimeter diameter watch. It's a little deceptive as the bezel is uh, inset. It's not proud of the case there. So it looks a little smaller than what it really is. Should be about the same thickness so yeah 200 meter water resistance on the skx and 500 on the delma so let's get the submariner here it's been a while since i've worn it so just threw it on the wrist here real quick keep this one in the left hand so there's a look at the size difference there sk i'm sorry the submariner is about 41 millimeter um, diameter watch Forgot the thickness. I believe it's 12 and a half or 13, but uh, you can see it's definitely thinner than the Delma. And the Submariner is rated to 300 meters of water resistance. So yeah, you can see the crowns, the uh, crown logo are different from each other, obviously. So anyway, just a quick look at that watch put this one back on wrist since like i said it's been a while since i've worn it feels so comfortable on wrist so let's take a look at the loom here well here's a look at the delma on the left in the skx 009 on the right uh loom is Definitely better on the SKX for sure. The indices on the Delma are just very small. Seeing a ref I don't know what that is on the Delma on the left there. It looks like something on the dial is loomed, but I don't know, I'm not seeing that by eye here. I see it on the screen. Perhaps the numbers in the decompression scale are loomed yeah it does appear that they are i'm not seeing it by eye but i can see it on the camera screen here so uh very interesting touch there if you have not subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button i really appreciate it uh, and that will conclude this video as always thank you for your time and thank you for watching